Run! Go! Get to the chopper! A, B, N. It's headphone steel! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a very special conclusion review for the Alien and Predator franchises. So I had a chance to watch Alien vs Predator and Alien vs Predator Requiem and I thought I'd give my final take on the franchises and how the movies fit into it. Um, the review is going to be kind of like my last review for Game of Thrones where overall I thought the with all the films notably in both franchises separately and these two films that independently they were good films but there was a missed opportunity in that they could have really set up an alien and predator um, universe where they either came from the same place because I guess if you uh, factor in Prometheus that humans or the first humans seeded um, the aliens and then um, the Predator is an offshoot of humanity as far as being an evolution separate from whatever happened on Earth. So I think with the Alien vs. Predator films, while they were generally not very well received, I'm, I'm going to actually go in and see why they weren't re well received, but for me, I actually enjoyed them and thought they were well done or well done enough. But they didn't really factor in well with the rest of the film. Or they didn't really, none of the films really worked well off of each other aside from um, Pred or Alien, Aliens, and I guess Alien 4. Alien 3 kind of, um, because Ripley was there, but um, I guess, well, I guess now thinking back, thinking about it out loud, the Aliens films work well overall. The Predator films, not so much. Um, although the first one was good, and I want to say um, the last one was good, the third one was probably next up on the list as far as being good, but didn't really set up the begin the um, people showing up very well. And then the second one was kind of an oddity. I don't. It didn't really make sense. So if they had jumped from Predator One to Predator Three, then it would have been a little bit better, I guess, or at least start off Predator Three with the ending of Predator Two to solve that but I digress so in my opinion Alien vs Predator the first one would have worked better as they had set up the crossover event um, as instead of Predator 3 set up Alien vs Predator and instead of um, Alien 3 um, they use Alien vs Predator as that combining film to set up their universe so the ending of Predator 2 is good because they have um, Danny Glover's character finding the alien ship and it taking off from Earth. And then, um, with Alien, or with Alien 3, um, we have it being a prison colony, so taking that idea and, um, implanting that into what we see in Alien vs. Predator as far as the, um, pyramid base, or the pyramid ship underneath the ice of Antarctica, kind of works better as a film to cross over those events and explain why the Predator had a Xenomorph um, painting on the wall of the ship. So by setting that up, you set up a rivalry that's gone back generations and potentially have them be variations of humans as far as experimentation gone wrong. And we now have the two um, alpha uh, fighters going at each other for all time and Alien vs Predator I think kind of tried to set that up as far as the um, mythology of the characters that the Predator would come every like hundred years or a thousand years or something like that um, and they pay, the humans would pay tribute to protect them and then they take out the alien or something like that so that story kind of felt convoluted but it would have worked better if it was a tying event between the two franchises um, and then as far as Alien vs Predator Requiem, it kind of works um, as a setup. Um, so after Alien vs Predator, if we had um, Alien 4, where we have, it's been a couple hundred years and humanity has now um, figured out how to implant the 
uh, Xenomorph into Ripley and it goes crazy and she's the um, only one who can defeat it and she lets them know that they need some sort of superior technology. She's introduced to the um, idea of the Predator and conveniently enough or by a good or a well set up um, plot point they have the Predator showing up after his hundred year or thousand years of not being there and then by setting that up um, they can set up uh, Predator 4 where at the end of Alien vs Predator Requiem they're able to figure out that or recover that Predator technology and set up a new set of weaponry um, and during all of this time as a running uh, plot point they finally figure out what happened or why the Predators and aliens were created um, and that they were um, other freaks of nature science gone bad or just um, bad aliens ruining the galaxy and destroying planets so they use the predator technology learn that the predators actually destroyed their creators and have been using their weaponry to um, kill the planets so they use the te predator technology against them to take out the predators once and for all um, as far as the alien um, they I want to say they convenient they can use the idea of the xenomorph predator hybrid to create some sort of um, predator uh, or some sort of predator acid that works against both and that sets up kind of that advanced technology and further sets up their universe so from there that kind of settles it as far as being able to take out both species now um, at some point if I get around to watch rewatching Prometheus and the Prometheus sequel um, it might change a little bit but because Prometheus is a uh, prequel to um, both of the franchises kind of sets up the first or originations of the Xenomorph if memory serves. I actually did see Prometheus in the theaters as a side story so um, I'm relying on the memory of when the film came out so um, the idea is that um, I guess because being as a, a precursor, I guess they have to find the first planet, I guess, and if they ever create a new, another film, or a third film in the Alien vs. Predator franchise, maybe called Alien vs. Predator Origins or Finale or First World or something, where they have to go and find that first planet where they both originated from. Maybe the Xenomorphs and the Predators were shot into space, they crash landed somewhere and had to make, and then they evolved on their own or something like that. But essentially both films, like I said, I actually enjoy them more than I thought I would. I had gone into both of the films thinking that they were very bad, terrible, not worth watching or anything like that. Um, my point of contention goes back to this whole review in that there's a very big missed opportunity in the crossover of the franchises as well as more on the Predator side where the sequels didn't really set up a continuity among them and they felt like they were set up as individual films that didn't really connect to each other and they um, were kind of, they basically were individual films that didn't really connect to each other. Um, Aside from random drops, of, there's a story of something in South America or something like that. So vague references to the first film, but that was about it. And I think the company at the end of Alien vs. Predator Requiem kind of was trying to set that up. But um, the Godzilla and King Kong franchises set up a better um, idea of an overarching um, background organization that was monitoring the situation. So even that or even trying to set up an organization like SHIELD or HYDRA or SWORD in the MCU. Um, basically now in retrospect having this um, organization like that set up kind of helps tie films and stories together so definitely a missed opportunity in this franchise so if they ever reboot the series um, both of them and they start from scratch it would be a good idea set to, in my opinion to set that up or set up a series of films going forward where they reveal on the organization uh, i think wayland corp on the um, alien side and i forget what it's called on the predator side but maybe it's just the government i think i want to say it was just the government um keeping track of the predators but setting up an organization 
for the government that comes out to work with Whalen Corp to say, hey, we have this technology related to the Predators, we know about the acid from the Xenomorph, so they have to come out and defeat an even bigger threat, whether it's another um, evolution on the Predator scale, the Xenomorph scale, or a hybrid of the two where they have to uh, figure it out. Or maybe it's an evolution of the three species of Predator, Xenomorph, and Human, and figure that out, or even going back all the way back to the drawing board and revealing the first human species that's been evolving separately. Kind of like a Superman, a Kryptonian planet, and um, setting things up that way to move forward as far as resolving the threat, and then the humans from Earth go back to that um, Krypton knockoff and have to tell them what's been going on to evolve and get their technology or weaponry or have them get called into action. So with that being said, as far as grading the films, I'd probably give them a grade of about uh, 80 to 85 percent, a solid B minus to a B. I enjoyed the films enough, but to me, because there's no setup for a overarching um, um, alien xeno or a xenomorph predator universe, it kind of takes me out of the films. Because once you start watching them all together, you realize that there's no um, overarching story to connect them all. So um, I want to say at the very least, if they had done something like, or if there was something like the Godzilla and King Kong um, connecting tissues, that would be good. Granted, it's not as well thought of, thought of and conceived um, as the MCU and their overarching stories in the various phases. The, um, background organizations like S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA, but having some sort of connective tissue is kind of something that needs to be thought of if they're ever going to move forward with these franchises, so I want to say if they ever, if, I, I think there's another, I want to say there's another film coming out when I, as I was browsing through the Wikipedia, but for me, if they're going to move forward with the franchises or want to keep them relevant, they need to do something along the lines of creating that connective tissue so that there's a reason to watch them and have them be connected. Um, continually evolve, or continuing to evolve the CGI and special effects of the alien and the predator, or the xenomorph and the alien is nice, but there's only so many battles they can fight. I mean, for me, they, I mean, it gets, it, while the films were entertaining enough going for, to watch them, in their entirety. I wasn't I don't want to say I was really bored through any of them, but it kind of stands out there's not that there's nothing really connecting them. So um kind of or except for the alien films where you have Ripley connecting um everything through it. So um granted Predator suffers from Arnold Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers and Jesse Ventura or not Jesse Ventura but the rest of the cast being too high profile of names. Um, where it didn't work out. And granted, Sigourney Weaver is a big name in the film industry, but at least they were able to get her in all of the films to make it, at least those films work out. So for me, I want to give the, as far as the films go, I want to give the edge to the Alien films, but as far as a character that I like better, I prefer the Predator. So, um, that's kind of where I landed it. So grading all the films overall, I want to give it just I'll give it probably a solid B minus, about a solid eighty percent. They're enjoyable films. I wasn't really, except for Predators Two, I don't think I was really bored. Um, granted, Predator Two, I did want to watch it all the way through, but it did feel enough of the way through Predator Two of what's the point, but. Overall, all of them I watched through. I wasn't, you know, bored and wanted to turn it. I didn't get to the point in any of them where I wanted to stop them and turn them off. They were all entertaining and fun to watch. So, like I said, overall solid B minus. Uh, for as far as Alien vs Predator and its sequel, B minus to B. So, um, that's all there is for that. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, want to tell me of things I got wrong, missed why you like or dislike the films, do you like the Predator more, do you like the Xenomorph more, uh, which film do you have, do you like the most, do you have a favorite, least favorite or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01, the, uh, 
Patreon is patreon.com slash Patel in zero one for to help support the show, get early access to content, special access to bonus episodes and reviews and things like that. Um, and of course the website is headphonesnail.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, all support options, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.